we want to evaluate the given double integral over the region R, where the region R is the parallelogram in the xy plane given by these four vertices. And therefore, the region R is this region here bounded by this parallelogram. To evaluate the given double integral, we're going to use the transformation given by x equals negative 4u plus 5v and y equals negative 5u plus 2v. So because we're performing this transformation or a change of variables, we'll also have to find the Jacobian. Looking at our notes below, this double integral integrated over the region R in the xy plane is equal to this double integral over the region S in the uv plane, where notice how the function f of x comma y must be expressed as a function of u and v, and differential a is equal to this factor, which is the Jacobian, times du dv. So because we're performing a change of variables using these equations here, again, we do have to find the Jacobian, which will give us an extra factor in the integrand function. So for our first step, we want to determine the new region of integration in the uv plane. To do this, we're going to have to find the equation of the lines that contain the sides of the parallelogram. And notice how I've already found these equations. Well, let's review how I found them. First, looking at this side of the parallelogram, notice how the line containing this side would have a vertical intercept or y-intercept of zero, and we can tell the slope is going to be two-fifths, and that's why the equation of the line containing this side is y equals two-fifths x. The line containing this side of the parallelogram would also have a vertical intercept or y-intercept of zero, and we can tell the slope is five-fourths, and therefore the equation of the line containing this side is y equals five-fourths x. Now let's take a look at this side here. We know it's parallel to this side, and therefore the slope of the line containing this side must be two-fifths, but notice how we can't tell the y-intercept or vertical intercept, so we'll have to do some work to determine the vertical intercept is negative 17 fifths. So the line containing this side, we know would have a slope of 2 fifths, and also passes through the point 1 comma negative 3. So using point slope form, we can determine the equation of the line containing this side. It would be y minus negative 3, so y plus 3, equals the slope 2 fifths times x minus positive 1. So simplifying, and solving for y, we'd subtract 3 on both sides, obtaining a common denominator. Notice how we do get y equals 2 fifths x minus 17 fifths. So this is how we obtain the equation of the line containing this side. And we can do something similar to find the equation of the line that would contain this side of the parallelogram, which would be y equals 5 fourths x minus 17 fourths. So now to find the equations in the uv plane that would give us the region of integration in the uv plane, we'll use these equations here and perform substitution into each of these four equations. Let's do this on the next slide. So we'll substitute negative 4u plus 5v for x and negative 5u plus 2v for y. So for y equals 2 fifths x, we would have negative 5u plus 2v equals 2 fifths times x, which is negative 4u plus 5v. Let's clear the parentheses. So we have negative 8 fifths u and then plus 10 fifths v, or just plus 2v. Now here, notice how if we subtract 2v on both sides of the equation, the v terms simplify out. If we set this equal to zero, we'd have negative 5u plus 8 fifths u equals zero. Notice how here u is going to be equal to zero. And now we'll perform substitution into this equation. So we'll have negative 5u plus 2v equals 2 fifths times the quantity negative 4u plus 5v and then minus 17 fifths. Clearing the parentheses. The only difference in this equation is we have minus 17 fifths on the right, so the v terms are going to simplify out. We'll add 8 fifths u to both sides. Combining like terms here gives us negative 17 fifths u equals negative 17 fifths, so u equals 1. 
which means u is bounded by u equals 0 and u equals 1. And now we do the same for these two equations. So we're going to have negative 5u plus 2v equals 5 fourths times negative 4u plus 5v. Put in the parentheses. We're going to have negative 20 fourths u or negative 5u and then plus 25 fourths v. Notice here if we add 5u to both sides, the u terms simplify out. Moving the v terms to one side, we'd have 2v minus 25 fourths v equals 0. So notice how here v is going to be equal to 0. And I will do the same for this equation. Clearing the parentheses. The u terms simplify out, moving the v terms to the left. Combining like terms gives us negative 17 fourths v equals negative 17 fourths, so v equals 1. So v is bounded by v equals 0 and v equals 1, which means the region of integration in the uv plane is going to be the square pictured here. Or if this is the u axis and this is the v axis, this would be u equals 0, this would be u equals 1, this would be v equals 0, and this would be v equals 1. So we'll use this region to determine the limits of integration for u and v, but we still have to write the given function in terms of x and y as a function of u and v, and then also find the Jacobian. So now let's work on determining f of u comma v. Well, if f of x comma y is equal to 4x plus 5y, f of u comma v is going to be equal to 4 times, well, x is negative 4u plus 5v. Then we have plus 5y, where y is negative 5u plus 2v. Simplifying, we get negative 16u plus 20v minus 25u plus 10v. Just combining like terms, we have negative 41u plus 30v. So now we know f of u comma v is equal to negative 41u plus 30v. Next, we'll find the Jacobian. Remember the Jacobian of x and y with respect to u and v is equal to this two by two determinant. So for our next step, we'll find these partial derivatives. The partial of x with respect to u is going to be equal to negative four. The partial of x with respect to v is going to be equal to five. The partial of y with respect to u is going to be equal to negative five. And the partial of y with respect to v is equal to positive 2. And therefore, the Jacobian of x and y with respect to u and v is equal to the 2 by 2 determinant, where the first row is going to be negative 4, 5. The second row is going to be negative 5, 2. So the value of this 2 by 2 determinant is equal to this product minus this product. So we're going to have negative 8 minus negative 25, which is equal to positive 17. Now this extra factor is the absolute value of the Jacobian. So we know that the absolute value of the Jacobian of x and y with respect to u and v was equal to the absolute value of 17, which is equal 17. So now we have all the pieces we need to set up the double integral in terms of u and v. The given double integral over the region r of 4x plus 5y, differential a is equal to the double integral over the region s, and f of u comma v is negative 41 u plus 30 v. And then we have times the absolute value of the Jacobian, which we know is 17 now, and then we have du dv. Now we need to find the limits of integration, and let's also distribute. Well, 30v times 17 is equal to 510, so we have 510v, 
and then 17 times negative 41u is equal to negative 697u, so we have minus 697u. And now for limits integration for u and v, because our region is a square, with respect to u, we'll integrate from 0 to 1. With respect to v, we'll also integrate from 0 to 1. Now that we've performed the change of variables, let's go ahead and evaluate this. We first integrate with respect to u, treating v as a constant. So we'll have 510 uv minus 697 times u squared divided by 2, or 697 divided by 2 u squared. For big F of a minus big F of b, we perform substitution for u. So when u is equal to 1, we're going to have 510v minus 697 halves. Then, of course, when u is 0, both terms would be 0. So this is a new integrand function. And now we integrate with respect to v. So we'll have 510 times v squared divided by 2, which is equal to 255v squared minus 697 divided by 2v. Now for big F of b minus big F of a, we perform substitution over v. So when v is equal to 1, we would have 255 minus 697 halves. And of course, when v is equal to 0, both terms would be 0. So this difference is the value of the double integral, which comes out to negative 187 halves or as a decimal, negative 93.5. I hope you found this helpful.